I see a lot of IT administrators with two bad practices when it comes to managing local admins on end user workstations. Number one, they often use the same password across all endpoints in the organization. And number two, even worse, they let users become local admins on those devices. While this certainly reduces our administrative overhead because those users can then install applications that they need, make application updates and so forth, it greatly increases our attack surface here because they're equally able to install malware, get ransomware on that device, and even have things like bad browser extensions that have access to local admin privileges on that device immediately. We need a solution that allows us to scale security for these local admin accounts across these devices in our organization, which is where a solution from Microsoft comes today called Local Administrative Password Solution. In today's episode, we're gonna be unpacking this as far as what this is, how to configure it step-by-step -step in the Intune Admin Center, and number three, what the admin experience looks like if you need to perform some type of administrative work on that workstation. So we have a lot to unpack today, guys. Let's go ahead and dive in. So LAPS stands for Local Administrative Password Solution. It's a modern cloud solution managed in Microsoft Intune and does allow you to integrate with a local on-prem Active Directory as well too. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you the cloud-based version. The primary benefits here is it does allow you to securely manage every single password across your fleet of devices in your ecosystem uniquely. It automatically rotates these passwords on a scheduled basis that you define and also rotates them immediately after use for secure access here. And number three, it stores them securely in Entra ID within your Microsoft account here. So only authorized users can go in and actually access those passwords. Basically, it's like a password manager, but for your endpoints. And it requires that end users are actually standard users on those devices and not administrators and actually can convert them through deploying this solution. Before we dive into configuration, let's go through some of the important requirements to actually roll this solution out. Okay guys, so as we dive in here to some of the prerequisites for enabling this service, I'll link this documentation as part of the video description. But effectively here, we have a couple of considerations, one of which is the licensing requirements. And as you can see here in this post, you need a Entra ID free or higher license. And the other license that you'll need as part of this is going to be an Intune license. So a base plan like a business premium is actually going to be your best bet for rolling this out you know, within an organization. The other requirement that you'll see here from a, just a device layer is that it does need to be either intra joined or hybrid joined devices only. Entra registered devices are not supported. And then you should have some operating system requirements here depending on the feature set. That'll become more clear as I walk through the settings, but I'll additionally link in the CSP documentation for LAPS. This is extremely important that you understand the different policy settings that are supported and what type of operating system supports them. Meaning, you know, as we walk through these actions as an example, it's going to have this applicable OS version here for what you need to do. And explicitly as part of this, you know, as we'll walk through some of these standards, you do need to be at version 24H2 as an example in order to have the setting actually work on the device. So it's really important that you take a look at this before you roll this out to an organization. This is explicitly the setting that I'll be showing you guys later for this like automatic account management where it does require this version 24H2. And that was something that I learned just going through the process, not having the setting work, trying to troubleshoot for about an hour before I referenced back to the documentation and saw, oh, I need to upgrade the OS, which seems trivial now, but hopefully I'll save you some time there in just reviewing this before we get into the config. From a setup perspective, one of the first things you'll want to do is go into the Intra Admin Center and go under Devices and then Device Settings here. We're going to have a couple of different settings that we're going to configure as part of this, but one of the biggest ones, you know, that you'll want to say here, obviously, is that you want to enable the Microsoft Intra local password solution or LAPS. This will be set to no by default. So you want to tick trigger this to yes. The other local administrator settings here that I like to change as part of this as well is number one, to not say that the global admin role is added as a local administrator during the join process. So I like to say that's a no. And then the same thing with this registering users added as a local administrator during the intra joined process as well too. So this is something where if you're using Windows Autopilot, did a video on that on my channel that you can see linked here. Uh, it's something where you can define whether they're a standard user or administrator going through the out of box experience. 
Typically, again, you're going to make the average user within your organization a standard user as part of this. So once you have these settings configured specifically, at least do this one to say that this is yes, and then we'll click on save here. Next, we're gonna shift into the Intune Admin Center here, and this is where we're gonna configure our lapse policy. So go under endpoint security here and we'll click on account protection. I'll go ahead and create a new policy here as part of this example. We'll select Windows from the dropdown and then we will select the local admin password solution here for Lapse and click create. And then from here, we'll give it some basic information so you can designate a name here. I'm just going to call this Lapse test just for the sake of this video. If you wanna call it something a little bit different if you're leveraging this in a production environment. And here's where we're gonna go through all of these various settings here. The first one is this backup directory and simply where they're backing up the password that's going to be encrypted as well too. In this case, I'm only going to say that that's backed up and they haven't updated these naming conventions. Still says Azure AD, but it's Entre ID now as part of this. But I want to say that this is in Azure AD only. You can configure the password age in days. I like to configure this to one week or seven days, but you can make that whatever you like as far as your standard goes there. I would say 30 or less is a good practice as part of that. The administrator account name, this is something that you can configure here. With each one of these, you have these infographics that tells you a little bit more. But if you notice here, you say, if it's not specified, the default built-in local administrator account will be located by the SID, um, even if it's renamed. And that's actually what you're going to start managing and see within the portal. But I want to call this out that there's another setting here that's newer as of 2025 that we're going to walk through that actually will also create a managed account that you can leverage on that device. And that's what we're gonna walk through today. So I'm actually gonna leave this at not configured. And then in the password complexity, I like to do this option here. There's another annoying part about the UI today is that they don't show you the full text of every value. So you kind of have to have a hover over it here to see the um, actual input. But this is where you want to say large letters, small letters, numbers, and special characters for improved readability. This would help for things like L's and 1's that, um, depending on if they're upper or lowercase, can look like letters or numbers, if that makes sense, um, as part of this example. So I like to do this because you want your technicians to not have confusion when they're extracting those passwords and using them as part of some admin workflow. And then the password length, I also like to configure here to be a little bit more complex in nature for um, you know character use for 21 characters. And then the post authentication actions is basically saying, you know, hey, when a technician goes and they log into a user's device, an administrator to go do their work, what do you want to have after they're done uh, effectively here? And so this setting that I like to choose here is, is resetting the password and log off the managed account upon expiry of the grace period. The managed account will be reset and the interactive login session will be terminated. So it's a good way to think about this more even also in like just-in-time access uh, concepts if you think about it that way as part of this. And then you can also say that there's a post-authentication reset delay. And you can configure this. This is an hours. Um, so in this case, it's going to be uh, one hour after I've logged in that that will automatically reset. And then you have this automatic account management enabled concept here, which is, again, going back to this where you're not defining the account that you're managing here, but you're defining it here, which is going to uh, fully manage that account um, on, on that device as well, too. So the target account will be automatically managed is the setting I like to select here. The target account will be enabled um, as part of that. And you can also choose here uh, that name of the target will also include a random numeric suffix as part of this. And I also like to choose this one, which is the default, which is a manage a new custom administrator account. And so we're going to basically say here that you know, we're going to provision, if you will, a new user on that device, it's gonna be fully managed. We're gonna be managing the passwords and Intune and rolling those automatically, rotating those both on that periodic basis for seven days, but also whenever there's been a use, you know, they've logged in with that account um, or they've, you know, elevated privileges on the account with those credentials. That's when it'll kick off this timer to then roll the credential once again. And so you can also do things like come in here and say that there's gonna be automatic 
account management name or prefix. So the syntax for this might be the name of the organization. As an example, I'm just going to use this CC labs because this is what's part of this designation here. And then when you click on next, you have the concept of scope tags that we've seen before. And then you need to go assign this out to uh, a certain group that has a device that you might be, in this case, testing with to start off with this policy. Um, and then we've already got one rolled out as part of this example, but I'm just going to go ahead and assign it to these window autopilot devices. In this case, I don't need to add any filters or target types. So you click on next and then you'll click on save to save the policy. So now on this device, I'm going to go ahead and just simply open up the local users and groups. You can do so by running this basic uh, prompt here to open that up. And then under the users here, I'll expand this folder and you'll see within here, I have the CC labs and then this number designation, which is in this case, uh, the count here that was automatically created as part of the lab service. And this is the account here that the password is actually stored now in Intune under that device. But this was created pretty quickly here. And again, this is the setting that requires the device to be at 24H2 uh, to have that fully pushed down. Otherwise, it just takes control of the uh, default administrator account here where you'd be able to manage that within the portal. But then it actually stores the password in the entry side of the house uh, that you can centrally manage. So it still take the same function, but I like doing the dedicated account here, especially with the new functionality of the designation just to clearly separate that out. Back in the Intune Admin Center here, if you go under Devices, you'll see that if we go to our Windows device here that we have as a test, we'll notice here that I can go under Local Admin Password under this tab here, and you'll have this button that says Show Local Administrator Password, and you'll notice here that I have the account name as part of this, and I have this password here. This is going to show me the next rotation um, and the last password rotation. So again, seven day period as part of this. And this is the account that we just saw on that local end user's device. So pretty cool, um, pretty slick. And again, if I had used that password in a session on that device, it would automatically update within that hour time frame uh, that we saw as well there too. And that's part of the power of just seamlessly managing this while increasing you know, the security behind it. You can also rotate the password on demand. If you're here on the main overview page, across the full right hand side, there's three dots here and you can click on rotate local admin password, which will create this job here that'll go from pending to complete once that's done. And then after that, you can simply go back to this location and grab that new password as part of this. So that's Laps of Microsoft Intune. Super easy, super powerful, and a great way to manage these accounts with licensing you likely already leveraged today. If you wanna see me break down Laps on macOS devices, drop a note in the comments here. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.